In this video series, I will walk you through the features of the IDE Editor, the web browser OpenStreetMap mapping tool. So you've selected a mapping task within a project in the Open Sidewalks Tasking Manager. In this case, we are looking at task number 13088 in project number 58, Seattle, Washington, crossings in pedestrian environment. This is the Tasking Manager mapping interface. On the left are two panels that are associated with the ID editor, the OpenStreetMap mapping tool. On the right, there is an information panel for the task at hand. Let's go ahead and hide that away so we can focus first on going over the features of the ID editor. When you land in the ID editor, the first thing that you notice is that you're looking at a satellite image in the background, which is providing you a point of reference while you're mapping. There are features that are already overlaid on the background image. The most prominent of these features is a magenta polygon that appears at the center of the map. This is your mapping task boundary. You can click on previously mapped features to find out more information about each. When you click on them, the left-hand panel updates to show you the information associated with that feature. In this case, we have clicked on a footpath. There are also main roads, primary roads, and secondary roads. You will also find residential roads. Each one of these road types is colored differently. You will notice that there are several pedestrian pathway features that have already been added to this map. There's the sidewalk here. It's the footpath that we've been looking at earlier, and there is also another footpath here in the park. Let's now move to talk a little bit about the different types of tools that you have at your disposition. At the top of your screen, you have your mapping drawing tools. The drawing tools are of three different types, points, lines, and area. The point is a node and has no shape. A line is a string connecting multiple nodes. Using the line geometries, contributors can define a way. An area is a line whose start and end nodes are the same. Therefore, areas typically define a connected closed shape. You can check out more information about shape resources at basic editing with ID. The panel at the bottom of the ID editor shows various information, such as a scale bar, in which users have contributed in the past. Before we proceed to discuss the rest of the tools in the ID editor, let's just take a look at some of the features that have already been added to the map. In terms of points, we can see that a point was dropped in this area of the map, and if we click on it, we will find that it is a bus stop. There is another point that was added near a trail here within the park, and that one is tagged as a restroom. There's another point along the park. If we click on it, we can see that it has been designated as a tree. In terms of the footways, we had already looked at the roads and the types of roads. There are also smaller types of access ways. For example, if we click on this one back here, we'll find out that it's a driveway. There are also different polygons. The most prominent of them are associated with residential buildings. There is another polygon that has been laid out here. Let's click on that and find out what it is. That one has been designated as a parking lot. So you start getting the sense that we use drawing tools to document where the different features are located. And then once we have placed that node, line, or area in a particular location, we proceed to add to it various attributes that will designate the type of feature that it is. Let's now discuss the other tools that we have available when we're mapping in the ID Editor. You can use the plus and minus buttons to zoom in and zoom out of the map. You can also use your mouse wheel to do the same. 
There are various shortcuts that are associated with these tools, so you should check out the information on learnosm.org in order to find out more about how to maximize the efficiency of these tools. If you click on the boomerang, the map will be centered at your location. You can change the background layer based on your desired tile provider. The default is Bing Aerial Imagery. You realize, however, that some images are better than others depending on the day that they were captured. So you might want to toggle between different backgrounds to make sure you have the proper reference available to you. Another resource you can use are the map data tools. The set of options allows you to control the information that is being displayed. Depending on the location, it offers users a set of options to analyze trace files and street site images to help determine the utilization of pedestrian pathways and to enable the remote analyses of built environment features. You can also check on map warnings. The editor performs a number of checks as soon as you edit something. If it thinks that what you did might cause problems, it notifies you in the Issues tab. Whenever the Issues icon on the right carries either a yellow for warnings or red for arrows dot, you should open the tab and see what it reports. This information is also displayed in the Object Feature tab on the left if the relevant object is selected. You are also warned that there are unresolved issues when you upload your data. The lower part of the Issues tab shows the available rules and allows you to disable them individually, though this is not recommended. If you ever need clarification on OpenStreetMap guidelines, click on the handbook. Before I move on to show you how to map pedestrian pathway features, I'm going to read a special note about deleting. In general, you should avoid deleting other people's mapping if it just needs improvement. You can delete your own mistakes, but you should try to adjust other people's mapped objects if they need changes. This preserves the history of the items in the OSM database and is respectful of fellow mappers. If you really feel something should be deleted, consider asking the original mapper or one of the OSM email lists about it first. Open Sidewalks is an open data project by the Tasker Center for Accessible Technology through the Paul G. Allen School of Computer Science and Engineering at the University of Washington. 